Good evening, Facebook Live family and those who will watch this um, after the live is over. Yes. We would like to welcome you this evening to our discussion um, about milestones and the LGBTQ rights movement. Um, there will be some things that we'll discuss, but there'll be other things that um, we are not able to discuss just basically due to the time frame. We probably could talk about this for about a six or eight hour lecture. But we're going to keep it to 25 minutes and just go over um, a few facts and a few milestones um, that we will think that we feel that will help you better understand the LGBT community, our civil rights, and how far we've come. But yet we have so much further to go. Yes, and history is and has um, always been critical. I can like transparently say I haven't been. A huge fan um, of history myself, but um, being a part of, of course, being black, being queer, um, really learning about the struggles that our people have faced in the past and how they um, determine our presence as well as where we're going in the future. And as an activist, this is super important to me. And in terms of education and understanding of our community, the LGBT um, rights. Um, movement is is just like all the other movements, you know, the civil rights movement we talk about a lot, um, but LGBT history is suddenly talked about, and so we want to share some tips. Um, we found great articles and timelines and all stuff, so we're going to take you through kind of some of the brief milestones and yes. want to have a little fun, and hopefully it's helpful to you, and maybe it will spark your interest in finding out more. So feel free to like, share, ask any questions, you know, as we go along or ask any questions now. If you have any questions, we're open. And as usual, at the end of the live, you can post questions and we will follow up later. Yes. All, All right, right. Let's go. All right. All right. So I think a lot of times when people think about the movement and the history, most folks have maybe heard of Stonewall. Mm -hmm. So the Stonewall riots happened in, um, in June of 1969, June 28th. Um, and they really mark why the month of June is really important for LGBT people. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a riot and protest um, when uh, police officers broke into um, what was a gay bar, a safe place for LGBT folks, and um, it became a huge riot and an act of um, resistance for the community and um, turned into what we celebrate um, now. So. The Stonewall riots happened in 1969, and there are some, of course, pivotal things that maybe happened before, but I think that was the real start of the movement, so 69. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, just to add on to that, um, of course, you know, um, in the 1970s and many years before, it was always a challenge for people to have somewhere to go who were a part of the LGBTQ um, community, so the Stonewall was a place um, where people were to go where they felt safe, so I just want to preface that just like now today there's you know some people still don't feel comfortable going places it was a lot harder to find safe places mm -hmm. um, back then due to the many riots and um, issues right. all right so next we have um, in 1978 70. Um, so two years later or a year later 1970 oh sorry so yeah so 1970 so that's where the riot actually took place um, um, in the Stonewall bar where the riot was and they began to name it um, Christopher, Christopher Street Liberation Day and that's where the first um, gay pride started for it to become a national um, pride month of June and that's where it originally started. The first pride parade and so that's on the one year anniversary of the Stonewall riots really marked the first gay pride parade and most gay pride parades if folks have heard of I'm talking about mainstream so not individual so like DC pride and New York pride and Philly pride are, are all held in the month of June to symbolize that first march in 1970 um, in New York yes to honor so, it, to honor it. Yep. Yes. so some of them are called pride I believe in Philadelphia it's called equality month or something then. I've seen signs downtown center city since we're we're closest there they also call it quality form or something yeah that's the organization okay amazing so moving on so we're in the seven early 70s now it's so a pivotal moment in the 70s is in 1973 um when the the diagnosis of homosexual 
homosexuality was removed from the DSM, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. So a little history. Um, the word homosexuality um, is the meaning of people who, ought, who have same gender or same sex relationships. It's not a word that we chose, and it's not a word that you would use to identify us. So you wouldn't be like, yeah, I know Anissa, this, this nice homosexual, right? So the word homosexual has a lot of stigma attached to it because it was a mental disorder. And so really knowing that um, beyond 1973, before that, you would go into doctors and you could be diagnosed as having a mental disorder called homosexuality. So really knowing that that's a, not a word we use, it's more of a word you would use in research. And it was removed from the DSM, which is the psych psychological manual, um, as a disorder as of 1973. So I think a pivotal moment um, and a little history about the word that people do lots of things with. But we'll talk about that later. Yes, and just to add a little bit to that, so before uh, before uh, before that point, um, people were also considered um, mm -hmm. they were put into mental hospitals mm -hmm. um, and they were treated as mental patients if they said they were um, homosexuals. So mm -hmm. it was that serious all the way up until that point. And there were treatments like shock th shock therapy treatment, mm -hmm. um, treatments to reverse people and to change you from being homosexual, unfortunately. So a lot of history around that word. Um, so now we're moving and cruising through the 70s and in about 1978, what was going on in California? So yes, yeah, so um, a man by the name of Harvey Milk, um, he was inaugurated as the San Francisco City Supervisor. Um, and he was openly, he was the first openly gay man. So um, that was a huge thing because people who were openly gay uh, were not allowed to um, at one point work in any federal or any city government. So, of course, there was people who may have worked in who, who were not um, openly gay. He was openly gay and he was um, inaugurated as the city supervisor um, in 1970. Similar to a mayor. A mayor, absolutely. And then what? And then actually a year later... Um, he was unfortunately killed, murdered. Um, and that inspired um, a guy by the name of Gilbert Baker to actually design what we know as the rainbow flag. So the rainbow flag was founded by Gilbert Baker, who is a California native. Um, and the original flag actually had eight colors. It actually included pink as well as um, turquoise. Yes. And those two colors were removed. So what most people know as the rainbow flag is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Um, there are definitely lots of different flags in our community. So there's a bisexual flag and a trans flag and a pansexual flag. And so the rainbow flag, I think is still evolution, but it was founded in 1978 yes. because of Harvey Milk's death. And each of the colors actually have a meaning. Um, and so the color, so red is life, orange is healing, yellow is sunlight, green is nature, blue means serenity or harmony, and then purple is spirit. So each of the colors actually have meaning, and it's super amazing to learn a little bit about that history, and we wear rainbows proud for so many different reasons, mm -hmm. um, but know how significant it is for our community. Absolutely. So the flag was to, um, you know, symbolize pride and hope. Um, for the LGBT community. So, you know, we kind of, um, you know, that's when we first uh, adapted our symbol um, or something to recognize our pride as hope. And in my mind, I understand that as, you know, in some of the early civil rights there, civil rights days of African American, you know, some of the, the fists, the fists holding up was, mm -hmm. you know, symbolizing um, unity and black power. Um, so for the LGBT community, that's what the gay, the uh, rainbow flag did. Amazing. And so right after that, that was in 78 and 79, um, something very um, influential happened in Washington, D.C. The first march, um, the first national march for lesbian, gay, um, lesbian and gay rights, because back then it was really just the L and the G. So for lesbian and gay rights, actually drew over 100,000 people to Washington, D.C. for the first national march. And that's celebrated in October which we know as LGBT History Month. And a lot of people don't know that, but National Coming Out Day is in the month of October, um, and lots of things are celebrated. So June and October are two of the biggest months in terms of LGBT rights, activism, and pride. Yeah, so also, as I mentioned earlier, so there were 
Um, many other um, marches and um, events took place or, or protests took place. There was a lot of marches on HIV and different things um, that we are, due to time, we can't mention every single um, march that happened, but there was a lot of big marches. I think there was 500,000 people who did a march on the HIV movement, um, which was very big as well. Big as well. So moving on into the 90s. 90s. So there's so much political stuff to talk about in terms of our rights and laws and different things like that. But um, what happened actually in 93 under Clinton's administration? Yes. So in 1993, under Mr. Bill, President Clinton, um, the don't ask, don't tell. Um, that was that military policy um, was signed, which allowed uh, people to participate in the military um, under the Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Previously, before that, um, in 1950, just a little bit of history, in 1950, anyone who was openly gay, um, all gay men and lesbians, they were removed from working at any government or any military. So it took from 1950 all the way to 93 um, for this to be able to happen and more people um, were able to basically live their lives and serve their country. Yeah. So yeah. So it, by 1993, the act was served so you don't. So don't act, don't tell. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was pretty amazing. And then in '96, so same right in the '90s under Clinton's administration, um, equality, marriage equality is such a big thing. I know a lot of people when it wasn't um, legal to be married, a lot of people would ask how I felt about it. And for me, there's so many other issues. But just so um, people realize that in 96, Clinton did sign the Defense of Marriage Act, which banned same-sex marriage in any of the states. And so that was a pivotal moment in our history for um, marriage equality. And so basically, our president told us that basically same-sex couples aren't supposed to be married by that bill. So... Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. Yeah. So 1993, don't ask, don't tell, 96. Bill Clinton was not. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Moving um, on to the 90s. Moving in the 90s. Fun fact. Fun fact. Fun fact. So um, fun fact, but yet very pivotal. Mm -hmm. um, Ellen DeGeneres came out as being a lesbian on the cover of Time magazine. And um, if you know Ellen DeGeneres, of course, you know she has her show. So even though this was like one of the first, you know, quote unquote, celebrities who came out, um, I believe it began to give more visibility to the LGBT community um, on television. Uh, because after that, you know, movies start, you know, shows and mm -hmm. movies begin to include more LGBT people. So even though it was something, it was something big um, and it opened doors and it opened other opportunities for other LGBT people in television. Um, you know, to be able to be showcased and be in movies, which, of course, brought more awareness and visibility um, for our community. Great. And so around that same time um, in the late 90s, a lot was happening. So like Shara said, more LGBT characters on TV started to um, show after Ellen came out, which was amazing. Also, the civil rights movement was actually asked to help with um, abolishing homophobia um, by um, Coretta Scott King, which is pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. Um, so the work that um, Martin Luther King, um, at that time he was deceased, of course, but Coretta Scott King basically spoke out um, for LGBT people um, in 98, actually, which was pretty amazing. Um, but then also, unfortunately, in 98, Matthew Shepard um, is the young man that was tied to a fence and beaten really bad in Laramie, Wyoming. Um, so most people have probably have heard of the Laramie Project, but that celebrates his life and also brings um, a reality to the violence um, among LGBT folks and bodies. And um, so his death was in 98 so it's also a sad moment in our history but from his death came lots of activism um, as well as plays and awareness about um violence in our community yes yes definitely right. and as i said there's a lot more cases that we could report and mention um that unfortunately bad crimes or bad things have happened to mm -hmm. people in the LGBT community. So we're, we're not able to list them all. So I don't want anyone to feel or say, well, you guys didn't mention this event. You didn't miss, mention that one um, due to time. We're just trying to get a lot in in a short amount of time. All right. 
And then we're in our 2000s. Oh, we're my 2000s babies. So. 2000 babies. Mm. Uh, millennials. No, no, not millennials starting with 90s. I don't know what they are. All right, something like that. I'm old. She's very old. 80 baby. 1980 here. 78. All right, 2000s. What's happening? So in 2000, uh, which was another uh, pivotal, pivotal moment, pivotal moment where um, Vermont was first to legalize civil unions. So at that point, they were allowing same-sex couples, quote unquote, to quasi um, become form a civil union. Not exactly a marriage, meaning we um, did not have all the same rights as heterosexual marriages. So they started off with making progression of civil unions. So it wasn't where we wanted to be, but it began it began more conversations and more recognition of okay we can be recognized in some way of a couple being together and being in a civil union. Um, fast forward from 2000 to 2004. 2004, so May <laughs> 2004 is when the first um, same-sex marriage was granted in Massachusetts. So from civil unions to very little rights, um, very little rights for, mm -hmm. for sake of time to 2004, uh, four years, we were able to move, and they were able to recognize same-sex couples as marriage using the same terminology as heterosexual couples, as well as offering a lot of um, rights to mm -hmm. couples. And over the years, in the early 2000s, different states um, and all, I think a lot of times was federally approved. There were 26 states that legalized same-sex marriage, but thinking about marriage and in, in all of its subsets, Proposition 8 is something a lot of people probably have heard of, um, and that was in California and was voted to make same-sex marriage legal. Um, um, well, made it illegal, sorry, made it illegal in California, and that was in 2008. And I think that that was a pivotal moment for the world because voters really strike down um, same-sex marriage and so it still was in the midst of the fight um, but lots of things happened in, the, in 2000 um, but what we know is two years later in 2010 actually it was found unconstitutional by a federal judge so yes. um, therefore that marriage equality um, the long journey that the community has been on to get our marriage deemed as legal yes. um, was finally hopefully coming to an end. Little did we know, not quite yet, but that not was 2010. So Proposition 8 was big, mm -hmm. then 2010, um, and all while marriage is like this big thing swarming around, something else happened in 2011. So in 2011, um, the Don't Ask, Don't Tell um, is repealed. Um, ending a ban on gay men and gay men, gay men and lesbians from serving openly. So at first it was they could serve, but it was not openly gay. And then it went from allow people to be open. Open. So you can you could serve, but don't ask, don't tell. Mm -hmm. You're not open, but you were allowed to serve. So it was some level of progression, and then now um, they're able to serve openly. Yeah. Um, and then, as we know, in um, in 2012, Obama was the president, always my president. Um, but Obama actually was the first U.S. sitting president to publicly support the freedom for LGBT couples to marry. And um, for me, that just means like a lot um, because a lot of presidents in the past have showed by their motives, their policies, their bills that they don't support LGBT people and Obama was always here for the team. So I yes, yes. um, appreciate him and that was in 2012 mm -hmm. um, and moving right along throughout his administration under his administration in 2016 um, as we all know was a pivotal uh, definitely a pivotal year for us but um, same-sex marriage became legal um, federally approved um, and became legal. No, sorry, wrong date. 2016. Um, was that 2000? And... Yes, 15. But sorry, I wanted to say this. But Obama announced that there's an actual national monument for LGBT and transgender rights, the Stonewall National Monument. So um, if you are um, near Christopher Park in New York, check it out um, because it has some history there. So I think um, how important that is. But 2015 um, was the actual year that 
uh, marriage was legalized. So we're almost three years in. And um, I don't know. So what does that mean to you? That LGBT marriage, you personally, that LGBT marriage is now legalized in 2015, thinking back from where we came from, um, which is the first marriage in 2004, um, was legalized. So that was um, about 11 years. So what does it mean to you? Um, so for me, it's like um, we've come so far. We still have so far to go. And unfortunately, you know, I feel like it's a it's a privilege. And I feel blessed that considering we're getting married in less than five months, uh, less than six months, you know, um, that we cannot, we can say we're, we are being married, that we're not considered a civil union. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a lot of rights that a lot of people decades ago did not have. So mm -hmm. it's definitely very important. It's very, it's going to be very meaningful. Um, I think on the flip side, unfortunately, this can be repealed and we don't know what that can look like. So um, it's, I'm excited, I'm happy, but I'm also aware and awake enough that things can change and they could try to revoke it. Um, and I'm, you know, I don't know if that's the correct terminology for it, but right. so a president could basically mm -hmm. try to change it. Yeah, and a lot of people may have heard of what people say domestic partner. So there is a, um, a way that you can be a domestic partner and it is not legal that companies have to allow benefits. So if Sure and I decided we didn't want to get married and wanted to be domestic partners for me to get her benefits or her to get mine or any other provision or policies um, that you have to be legally married for. And then if that's taken away, what that means. Mm -hmm. And so thinking about how um, the privileges and access you get can actually be taken away. And so whether this world says we can be married or not, we will be, um, which is pretty amazing um, because it's, in, it's really in our hearts, but we also want those same rights, especially if one of us was to pass away because if you're not legally married, there's just some rights you don't have. And so there's a civil union, there's domestic partnership, but marriage is the ultimate thing that we want to protect us. Yes. Um, it's the protections federally, um, locally, locally mm -hmm. all of that. So thinking about that. And so that was 2015, 16, and then here we are in 2018. So I wanted to end with two actual pivotal moments in LGBT history that actually happened right this year we've only three months into the year but some amazing things have been happening so remember we talked a lot about don't ask don't tell um whether you can be open or out in the military which you can be now and as of february 26 the first openly transgender person signed the contract to join the u.s military yes so super exciting um because especially trans folks have um, had a long fight and struggle to be able to serve our country. Yes. You would think that like people want to sign up to serve our country, it wouldn't matter what their gender is, um, but it's a thing. And so um, this year we can say that uh, transgender people, um, well, the first will serve in the mili military, which is amazing. And then I don't know if folks watch the Academy Awards, yes. um, but Daniela Vega, um, yes. She started in a foreign film called A Fantastic Woman. Um, she was the first openly trans presenter in Academy Awards history. Yes. Not that I even know how long the Academy Awards have been on, but to have an openly trans person present an award is huge. Um, and so some of you may be thinking like, is this stuff like even relevant? And it is, because if you think about, for example, like black Right. So the first time a black person voted, the first time a black person sat in the front of the bus. So our movement is is similar to other movements for all different identity groups. And being a black person, I've always sort of kind of learned about black history, not in the classroom as much. Right. But outside of in life and being an activist. But in schools and if you're not growing up, you're never taught about LGBT history. So because this is how we identify and know that this is who we are, it's really important to know where we've came from and being that we're both activists. Yes. Because we're doing this, we're spreading the words, we're continuing to save lives and share our story. Um, we really want to be in tune with the fact that there's such a rich history with ups and downs that come with our community. And we want to bring some normalcy to our identities and our world and our community. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that's why we do this. So 
so many great things happening. I always say that we've come a long way, but we have a long way to go um, for, for true, I guess, what they're saying, equality, I would call it liberation. Um, but this whole equity versus equality versus, you know, liberation. Um, but I think that we're headed in the right direction. Um, I think starting with our youth yes. is important. And um, I don't know, how you go from there? You want to say any last thing? Yeah, I guess um, the biggest thing for me and uh, um, uh, one of the reasons of us wanting to do this discussion tonight um, is sometimes I feel like um, some people may make statements and say like, um, you know, like they feel like to a degree we have a choice. Like, you know, why don't you just be straight or why don't, you know, why do you have to be gay, or any, you know, LGBT or Q? Why? And then... For some of us, I feel like it's not a choice. It's who we are. So, mm -hmm. uh, and another part is like, okay, so why would I want to choose to be discriminated against? I'm already, if I'm, just use myself as an example, I'm already an African-American woman. Why would I choose to be gay to add another level of discrimination, to add another level of possible struggle um, to my life, why would I really choose that? That there must be something that I feel that's innate in me that I feel that this is who I am. Who would choose to pick a struggle um, if they had that level of choice? Mm -hmm. So just something to think about um, when you may say, well, you know, why don't you just be straight? You know, it's not that easy. That's not the way it works for some of us. Um, I can't say all of us, but it doesn't work that way for me. Um, that I can't just choose to go be with a man and, you know, live happy. You know, I guess if I was forced to do it with my life, but that doesn't mean that I, I would be happy and mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that I will feel that I'm living my life of purpose and my life um, for my destiny. I love you, honey. I love you more. <laughs> So, um, so that's it. We are going to be diligent about trying to keep these between 25 and 30 minutes. That's really important to break it down. We thank you all who actually joined at some point and listened and listened to the whole thing. And for me, I really think it's about exposing yourself to things that you wouldn't or ordinarily learn about. And if that is through us, I'm super appreciative of you all joining us and liking, loving, sharing, and subscribing to our YouTube page yeah, subscribe, um, and our um, Believe Our page. Um, and just to keep up with what we're doing, I think next week we are not going to be so heavy and we're going to talk fun wedding stuff next week. Fun wedding stuff. So, so we each are going to come up with stuff. five wedding questions for each other. Five wedding questions. That, that, that I'm not going to tell her. She's not going to tell me. And then we're going to talk about it. And we want you all, those of you who have planned a wedding, are married. We want you all to have some fun with us because we are in the thick of preparing our wedding invitations to yes, go out. To go out. Mm. Um, and some people are thinking, so how is a gay wedding and mm -hmm. how do people of the LGBT community have a wedding? So yeah. we're going to talk about have it. Because it's legalized now. It's legal now. So we really get a little certificate and sign a paper and all that. So we're going to have some fun. So yes. please um, ju 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 join yes. us next week. I can't believe March is like shimmying along. But join us next Sunday, 8 p.m. Um, we're going to talk wedding. Right. <laughs> it's going to say like gay wedding slash I'm gay. Because yeah. it's really yeah. not yeah. such a thing. It's, it's just, just a wedding. wedding. So love you all. Peace to y'all. Have an amazing, blessed week. And remember, um, be the change you want to see in the world. Love you. Thanks for joining.